We just got back from a long weekend of picking some amazing barrels in Kentucky. And we ran across a distillery Trenton I have never heard of before. And due to our good friend Bucky, we were able to do some tastings. Glens Creek Distillery in Frankfurt, Kentucky. Unbelievable, in my opinion. Well, and it was weird, too, because... I don't know about you, but like I'm, I'm into the the history of like the dusty bottles and that stuff. I've been trying to collect some here and there when I can. But Glens Creek is in the Old Crow Distillery, like the OG Old Crow Distillery, right. which I th I would have thought that I would have stumbled across that at some point in my research. That just goes to show you my research is not good, <laughs> I guess. Uh, that well, that's why I don't research stuff for the videos. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's right next to Castle and Key, and there was a there was a uh, one of the roads was closed. Just, just where the distillery ended, the right. Glens Creek ended. So mm -hmm. I think Woodford Reserve was on the other side. It's kind of nestled yeah. in between the two. Right. Um, but it's a really cool old, like all the all the old rick houses are yeah. still there. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too hot to do a tour of all the dilapidated buildings and like all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, David did show us some pictures of it, which was really neat. Yeah, it's fantastic. But the juice yeah. was just as cool and just as good as yeah. the as the grounds were. So. Yeah, David is the uh, owner master distiller there at uh, at Glens Creek, and he showed and he he let us taste some amazing stuff. He yeah. really did, and we had a meet and greet there too as well. We spent like four hours there. Yeah, so it was thank a while. you, David, for your hospitality. All right, Trent, I'm going to try to fly through this real quick because as you see, we got a few things to taste. A couple. But if, but some things you really need to know about Glens Creek Distillery. Sorry, I have to cut no, you off. Yeah, Before we get it. into the, to the, what do you call it, the, the down and dirty or the, the, the <laughs> thick of it, something. Um, we, have a, we have a live show this Friday. Oh, yes, It's going do. to be a Booker's Blind. Oh, yes. I have some interesting things yes. lined up for this. Yes. Unfortunately, one of the bottles I was going to put in there won't be arriving in time for the live show. Come on. But I have... I have some good plans, so you're going to want to check that out. It's going to be Kurt, it's going to be Kent, I'll be in the background, and then we have some special guests swinging by. Yes, we do. Um, and we will talk about that probably during the live show. Yeah, that'd but be great. stay tuned. It's this Friday, 8 p.m., Yeah, and we hope to see you all there. Yeah, and the best thing about the live stream, your mom's 50th birthday party. We're yes. having a birthday party here that night, too. Woo! Rebecca's 50th birthday. Don't miss it. She's getting on camera. <laughs> it's going to be it's gonna be, she's not gonna it's gonna be a while. It's going to be a fabulous time. You know when Kurt's going to doing this. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. It's going to be good. I'm excited. It's a big day. I'm excited. So, anyways, a few quick things about Glens Creek Distillery, Trenton. And, and you're aware of this, too. But they handmade their pot stills there. Yes. They handmade their, all, their own pot stills so their juice is triple distilled in their own stills, right? They, they produce roughly one barrel a day. That, yep. So nothing mass produced there at all. So everything that that is up here is actually single barrels. Everything. So they don't have a set time frame that this one is aged three years, this one's aged four years. No, that doesn't happen. They taste it when they feel it's ready. They bottle it, and it's bottled as a single barrel. That's what I like the most. That's pretty incredible. We tasted something that... Um, was put into a barrel. He gave us a sample and he said, guess how long this has been aged. Yeah. And I, I think the range was anywhere from like uh, six months to a couple years. It was like nine or 10 days. <laughs> and it was like just as dark as these. Just the flavor close. was really nice. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything compared to how long yeah. these have been aged with the juice and stuff. Right. But just that comparison was yeah. incredible. A couple more real quick thing. All their barrels are toasted first and then charred to a number three char. So that's how they do all their barrels. Now, here's the only catch. The first one we're going to discuss here is OCD5. So I'm assuming the OCD came from Old Crow Distillery. But OCD5, we'll start with that anyway, Trenton. That one is dis distributed in, I think, I think it was Wisconsin, Kentucky, and Tennessee only. That sounds about sounds right. Sounds about right? Yep. Anything else you'll have to buy at the distillery. So what I am suggesting highly a lot of you folks message me all the time that you're going to the Bourbon Trail. Where should we stop? Stop Sounds here. Great. He has all this stuff for sale at the distillery. You might find the OCD5 if you're in some of those states or here or there. But stop. You, you absolutely will not be disappointed. Absolutely not. No. Everything up here, too, is about between 60 and 70 bucks. Yeah. Roughly. Every bottle we're going to show you today is about 60 to 70 bucks. So, Trenton, let's go with this OCD5. 
Mash bill, I think on this one, I think he told us it was somewhere around the 80 to 83 percent corn level, and the rest of it, of course, is rye and malted barley. So every proof point's different. The age is different. It should say the age on the back, if I'm not mistaken, and the proof on the front, Trenton. 45 months. I don't want to speak out of turn here because I'm usually wrong, but I think this is the OCD is the old crow, like the old crow mash bill, and it's 60, 30, 10. Really? I think that's right. Or is that 60, 30, 10? Okay, I lied. D disregard that's everything right. I just said. That's all right. But yeah, so 40, 45 months, so almost four years. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. And right. all this is a little over 100 proof. Every bottle, we can just we can just skip through that. All these bottles are between like 105 and 108 proof. Yeah. All Single barrels. Them. Single yeah. barrels, just so you know. Good Lord. Peanut butter. That, yes. Babe. Chiff. Jiff. Peanut butter right here. Right here. With like a chocolate. Peanut butter. Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah. This is Honestly. this smells better than Reese's. I'm, I'm, I, didn't even get, I didn't even get this at the distillery. Did you? But that's what I'm no. getting right now. This is sat for a little bit because Trenton had a little bit of mess up with the little card you put in there. We're not going to talk about that. But it's all right. Yeah, it's fine. So it's been in the glass about 40 minutes. And I'll say, we were we were in the distillery and we were tasting these. Yeah. And it was it was hot. It was hot. There was not a lot of AC. And, <laughs> fans, uh, you know, fans. I, you had fans. It was, it was all good. fans, but, you know, I was yeah. sweating. I'm not made for that yeah. kind of weather. It's fine. My house is 65 degrees all the time, so horrible. I'm used to that. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> Kurt doesn't like it. No. But, oh, also, hot take. I don't think Reese's peanut butter cups are good at all. Um, but yes, this is like yeah. But I got chocolate peanut butter. It's I really, it's I really nice. a little marshmallow. I feel like too. Yeah, maybe a little marshmallow rich on the nose. Wow. Yeah. It's almost like kind of sour too on this one. Mm. Oh, duh, because it's a single barrel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Man, I'm getting maple. On the palate too. Yep. I don't necessarily get that peanut butter. It doesn't really flow into the palate mm, for me. Surprisingly. I'm getting some maple. I'm getting caramel. I'm getting a little bit of that charred oak, but it's a beautiful because he toasts and chars the barrel. It's a real beautiful wood note there. Oak note. That's that's delicious. Mm hmm I think if I recall correctly, apart from the rye, this was my favorite. Of the, the the samples that we had, it's a really good. I don't know if too many, too many sixty dollars so bottles that would beat that. And forty five months, not even four years. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've never had a a less than four year bourbon that's yeah. that good. I think this yeah. competes with a lot of the single barrels that I drink at home. Let's move I'll over to the weeder trend. This one, what do you? How do you? This is sweet. It's S W H E A T. Sweet. Swahit. I'm assuming. Swahit. Swahit. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I can't even speak normal words half the time. This is their regular mash bill. The 80 summer, whatever said corn, but they just replaced the uh, the rye with wheat, and they came up with this bottle here. So I think 37 monther. Yep. I was gonna say I don't have my glasses, but it appears to be 37 months. And again, all of that. it's about 100, 108 proof. You can read that without your glasses. Barely. Wow. That is <laughs> I barely picked that out. I get some of the same nosings, the the different, um, like, there's some kind of a, is there like a grain, like a like a nice malted grain in there for you? I just got like a little bit of like a, a smoke as I pull, like pulled away. I will say that I get like a, like a little bit of a Sharpie-y kind of note, mm -hmm. like on a, on a sweet level, like if, if, if um, Willy Wonka made a Sharpie, <laughs> it would be kind of like that because it's, it's not off-putting. Do you not get like a smokiness? No. Why am I getting a smoke? Not necessarily, no. But I can kind of, I can, meat? I can get your very sweet Sharpie note. You I mean meat on the nose? I get kind of meat on the nose. <laughs> no, but I'd be digging it if I did. That's for sure. Yeah, it's got some nice, like sweet, sweet peanuts kind of note. Mm-hmm. Sugared peanuts, roasted sugared good, peanuts. Good, good one. The wheat does soften the palate just a touch. Yeah. But I find it to be the wheat note. The seems like the grain, the grain on the palate is a little bit heavier than what we found in the OCD five. Yeah. But it's a developed grain note. It's not a raw young grain note. It's a developed grain note. But I find it to be a little bit more. I can really taste that wheat in there. 
So when you say you can taste the wheat, like do you pull off on the side of fields and eat a piece of wheat? Is that how you kind of know what that's like? Do you tell like a wheat bread, processed well, you know, wheat? What when you, I was a young you boy and I worked on the farm and I had the wheat that's in my mouth. Yeah. Okay. Sure, sure. Did you have the pitchfork sure. with the hat? Like yeah. those, those, that painting that's famous? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Was that you? <laughs> Actually. <laughs> that was my grip, Paul. <laughs> I, I knew I saw a resemblance there. <laughs> Still very good. Yeah. A lot of sweetness there, too. I like this one. It's a really nice bottle. All right, moving on down here to this Cafe Ole, right? Cafe Ole. Yes. All they did here, same mash bill. Only the, the barley has been heavily toasted and uh, malted so they get more of a, a coffee-ish, chocolatey-ish yeah. note to it. So the, the, the barley in here has been has been heavily toasted. I remember you liking this one quite a bit when we mm -hmm. were there, which was surprising because if you're describing a coffee, you don't like coffee. I, I know. I know. A lot of chocolate on the nose. Lots. Lots of chocolate for days on the nose. Milk chocolate. Mm. That's right. I have to be honest. This wasn't, wasn't my favorite just because, I don't know if you've ever had it, but Hard Truth does a chocolate mm -hmm. malted rye. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that it has that like bitter bitter note that mm -hmm. i'm just not a huge fan of um the the flavors and the sweetness are nice but but that like chocolate like that bitter chocolatey mm -hmm. malty kind of mm -hmm. thing going on yeah. doesn't really jive well with my yeah. palate yeah any he, any he, he's he's on he's on the right track there for me it's not bitter enough to where i don't like it mm -hmm. but there's definitely like a, a bitter chocolate note with a little bit of that coffee grain uh, with some uh, maybe a like a dark brown sugar and molasses note. Yeah, that's what I get out of here. I've had a new riff winter whiskey that is also distilled using a chocolate malt, um, a, like a grain mm -hmm. that is very similar to the to the aspects of this that don't really jive well with my palate. But there's good aspects in it apart from that. This kind of reminds me, Trent, of a hot chocolate. I don't think I've had a hot chocolate. Before. Oh Lord, help us, babe. Seriously, is that like that? Oh, is that another one? I swear he's had hot chocolate. Is that like that Swiss, <laughs> like the yeah. the Swiss pack? Okay, I've had that. Well, but when people put marshmallows on my hot chocolate, just get out of here. No, no, I, no, I'm get not for that whatsoever. <laughs> no, it's like putting no. marshmallows on a yeah. on a sweet potato casserole for Thanksgiving. It's just not necessary. That's just nasty. That's just not necessary. That's just wrong. I think this is the first time you've ever agreed with me when I said <laughs> yeah, that. on both, <laughs> on both marshmallows <laughs> and marshmallows. On. This is no, a win. Marshmallows, not my thing. No, nasty. Maybe a s'more. Other than that, I can, I can, mm. I can do a s'more with a marshmallow. Yeah, one. But it's like burnt to you know what. <laughs> It shares no resemblance to a marshmallow after I throw right. it out of the fire. <laughs> Wrapping up the Cafe Ole. You know, molasses is what I get, Trent. Almost like a dark a dark chocolate, bitterish to a, to a touch of a hot chocolate note with, with a hint of coffee. That, that's what I get out of that one. Yeah. All right, let's move on to this one here, Trent. Cuerv I got it. Cuervito Vivo. Cuervito so Vivo. So the exclamation point is upside down at first. So is it like you're supposed to be the opposite of excited? I, I haven't the slightest clue. Oh, okay. Now this one here. Martyr would know. You have your glasses. Just read a little bit of that there. Because that's that's what you're talking about before. When you are privileged to operate on the grounds of one of the most iconic bourbon distilleries in history, it is imperative to honor the tradition of those who make this place great. We created this premium bourbon as a tribute for James Crow and to all the men and women who were a part of creating the legend that we get to enjoy every day. Yeah. So if you yes. remember that mash bill from our conversation, I do not. 60, 30, 10. One okay. of these is 60, 30, 10. I'm assuming that I would think be it's this that one. one. So yeah, because I, I, I apologize. You do, I do not remember that. This is completely different from these other few that we've just tasted. At this, least I remember that from the distillery. This is 33 months, and if it's anything like what we tasted mm -hmm. at the distillery, very unique. Extremely, and in a wonderful way. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, on the, <laughs> yes, on the nose. and yes. It's on the nose. The aromas are completely different. Very light caramel. Savory notes. I struggle with that savory, but like... I don't even know how to describe it. Peppers. Mm hmm Chiles. Wow. That's like a... 
it, it almost is like a like a grilled poblano pepper in a way on the finish that it's really sweet up front mm -hmm. but then like at that end it's like you just took a, 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 a poblano pepper off the grill 100 percent correct this is so different than pretty much anything that you'll find now i will say this trend i think this might be might be a bottle that i could enjoy an ounce or so and then i'm done mm -hmm. it's kind of a treat you know it's something i couldn't pour uh in your everyday drinker category mm -hmm. or you know I would do it on occasion with a one ounce and be done, almost like my peated scotch. Yeah. Once I pour an ounce or so and I have that, I'm pretty much done, right? So this is on the same line, but it's it's just, it's gorgeous because it's different. It's light in the caramel notes when it hits the front of the palate and then it hits you with that chili. It's, there's like a roasted chili note there. It's it's just great. It's, it's different, it's unique. Yeah, I get what you mean about not not it, it not being like an everyday-ish mm -hmm. kind of pour or something that you'll sit mm -hmm. down and then pour five things up. Mm -hmm. For for me, and from what it sounds like you as well, it's it's savory though. Very. Love it. It's like a Absolutely dessert, love. but not a dessert. Yeah, but you know, ask your mom, because she a lot of times tells me when I do cook, I like to put peppers in a lot of things. She'd be like, babe. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of like a Southwestern type of vibe and a lot of stuff that I cook. So this is like right up my alley. I love this. I love this sip. Yeah. It's really, really good. It's, it's solid. All right, last but not least, Trent, this is 100% corn. And um, amazing COB. Oh, I see what they did. A dash, like yeah, a little play on words. A dash, M-A-I-Z-E dash I-N-G C-O-B. Yes. 100% corn whiskey. Very interested in this. You made a bold claim when we were sitting I, down. I did. I want to taste it again, though. This is my claim was when I was at the distillery. This is the best 100% corn whiskey I've ever tasted. Ever. Have we had a lot of? Do we have a lot of 100% corns down here? Not necessarily. I got, I got the old 55 and the mellow corn. Um, this was better than mellow corn. Hey. Well, we gotta sip it. Gotta find out. Oh yeah. This is kind of like a. This is kind of like your grandma used to make. I'm getting like a root beer bottle cap. On the nose. Like a great bottle cap, like a subtle sweetness, but still has like some. And I love bottle caps. I know you do. You know that. You like the root beer ones? I like them all. That's disgusting. <laughs> I like them all. Yeah, I'm getting like some bottle cap vibes. All right. I don't know where that came. The ding from. dong put that in my head, and of course now I smell bottle caps. You're welcome. <laughs> but I love bottle caps, so that's good. What I'll say, I'll make another bold claim. If when we did the Heaven Hill, um, the 20 year mm. corn whiskey. I forgot about that. Yeah. If that was actually 100%, which I've seen very conflicting information about. Mm -hmm. If that was 100%, I would say this is very on par with the flavor profile that I got from that. You age that a little bit longer, 35 months of yeah. the aging. Say you age that six, seven years, something like mm -hmm. that, five years. I don't know. And I'm, and I'm speaking out of turn because I am not a distiller by any stretch. You should be. But to me, if you add some age to that, it would blow that heaven hill out of the water. Yes. Without question. I agree. It's really good the way it sits. I agree. Better than any 100% corn whiskey I've had. Yeah. You add some age to it, game over. Extremely enjoyable. It, 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 I, I know of some cocktails that I want to make with that too. No I, I struggle with getting much uh, apart from the sweetness and some mm -hmm. oak on mm -hmm. it. I don't know if that's normal with 100% corn whiskey. To me, not. it's like, it's it's legitimately like, there is some oak in there, so I'm gonna grant you that. It's on the back of the palate, yeah. you know, you get that oak. But I get some some buttered corn, cream corn. Yeah, it's all good, dude. That's great stuff right there. Great what's, stuff. Cream corn, buttered corn. What's the difference? Well, between, what's the, what is cream corn? Well, you had cream. Ew. And it's like kind of a little bit soupy and gets thicker. The cream gets thicker on there. You add some spices in there. Squirt a little citrus or something in there. A little acid in there. Ooh, got yourself a sweet deal there. 
Then you put some chilies in there too with it. Oh, I can just go on and on. I was forced Wonderful. to eat cream corn as a kid, not by mom or I Kurt. I was going to say, I did not make you eat cream corn. I was at a babysitter's <laughs> house and they had cream corn for dinner, brandy. <laughs> We were in the we were in their basement and she brought down this this stuff. It was in like the Ziploc bag and it just looked like a big old <laughs> bag of mush and I was very worried because I mom never made anything like that. We were getting corn dogs and good food, <laughs> chicken tenders. And she took a spoon and put it in the bag and just poof, like here's some sloppy Joe like the, <laughs> the, the Billy Madison thing but with cream corn. And I was like I, I I don't like that. I'm not gonna eat it. And she's like well, you can get up when you eat it. And I waited till my mom picked me up. I didn't eat it. I sat at the stool for hours. You know, that doesn't surprise me one bit. Nope, I'm not eating cream corn, man. Can't do it. I wonder if Brandy remembers All right. that. Now we gotta, it's, we just gotta watch the show. It's on now because I'm making some. No. Oh, without a doubt. It's happening. Cream, can you I do a cream corn, corn cocktail? <laughs> I did very, yeah. Why not? It's on. If we're gonna do a hot dog water cocktail, might as well do a cream corn cocktail. I was cocktail. challenged to that at the distillery when her meet and greet. <laughs> Hot dog water cocktail. Coming. Ew. coming you know what's soon. happening, honey? Hot dog water cocktail. I coming, was challenged. Coming I, got, soon. I gotta pick it up. You know? Chicago dog. We'll figure it out. Oh, we'll see. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. There's no question about that. Mm. Yeah. All right, let's get back to some more serious things here. We appreciate our time at Glens Creek Distillery. Yes. Once again, Bucky, thank you for lining that up. It was a real, real treat. If you are ever on the Bourbon Trail, and if you're in Kentucky, do not pass up Frankfurt. Do not pass up Glens Creek Distillery. You'll find some amazing things there, and it's all, I think he only has like maybe two, three, or four employees, and they're all, they all work together yeah. with this. They're not, I shouldn't even say employees, because they have a real good relationship. They work together to try to, to try to come up with the best product that they absolutely can. Everything's handmade, hand-tasted. I was super impressed. Was had a, a great cool time. Experience. So thanks for everything. All right, that's all we got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. We had a great time. I can promise you that. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time right down here with Trent and I in the good old basement bourbon bar. See you later. <laughs>